Hello, my chess friends. Uh, I'd like very much to share with you a formidable game in between Vasily Ivanchuk with white and Garry Kasparov with black. So this incredibly creative game happened in 1991 in Linares, Spain. So this is a Moscow variation. It's something that you're going to play. I mean, if you're having black and you choose to play the Sicilian c5 and d6, it's very possible that your opponent with white will be playing at some point bishop to b5. Okay, so you got to be aware. And now this game completely shows the genius that Vasily Ivanchuk uh, can display when it's in its best uh, uh, form, mental form, and it's it, it, it's a wonderful game, very combative, uh, very belligerent, highly creative, very sharp, and it's totally totally worth it, guys. To having a look at it, ha having a look at it, and learn from it. So let's just go with this beautiful, superb game. So e4 and c5. So far, so good. Okay, knight f3 and d6. So here, Vasily Ivanchuk, at the time in 1991, he was of 2695 LO rating. And Garry Kasparov, the world champion at that point in time, was 2800s LO rating, the, the strongest uh, player in the world, and by many regarded as the strongest chess player in history. Okay, it's now my place now to debate if that's true or not. My purpose now is just, guys, to sharing this this jewel of the past, actually, and of the future, and uh, all-time uh, evergreen. Bishop b5 now, checking the king. Personally, when I'm having black here, I choose to play the variation of bishop to d7, and in case bishop takes, I'm taking back with the queen, then developing knight on c6, given a chance, e6, d5, this kind of variations I'm uh, playing with black. Now, there are also possibilities with knight c6, and there is the knight to d7, if you don't want to play bishop to d7, if it looks too drawish to your approaches, of course, you could play knight to d7. It's exactly what Kasparov played, knight b8 to d7. So, d4, when you don't know what to do, go for the center. d4 already challenging the c5 pawn, knight to f6. Now, White can also play knight to c3, it's a natural move, nothing bad about this one, protecting the pawn. But even Chuck goes for castle kingside. Now, if you're having the question, why on earth would they do that? What if the black knight takes the pawn? That is an incredibly risky choice for black to play. And actually, the situation will deteriorate very quickly. Because after knight takes, you, for instance, you're going to play something like rook e1 sort of making the knight to go back that's a possibility of course they can play d5 uh, okay let me just give you a flavor guys if the knight were to capture here you're going to play something like rook e1 targeting the knight let's just assume they go back and you might be saying yeah well what happened they just took a pawn and that's it so what's the big deal the big deal is that white will be crushingly superior from a positional point of view you're going to take on c5 uh they take you're going to play knight on c3 and now obviously black needs to castle their own king and they need like at least like three tempos to do that and it's a lot of problem looming on the horizon they might be playing e6 just give an example now you're going to play knight to g5 and you might asking uh what's the purpose of this well after bishop e7 just to continue just a couple of moves to exemplify why knight taken on e4 is a bad one look at this super uh interesting move rook to e6 and in case the pawn takes back knight will be taken on e6 and it's just devastating it's so bad for black i don't know what to suggest, I don't know what to say. Queen must move, queen is under attack. What, queen to b6? Uh, disaster here. You either play queen e2 or you take on g7. It's just a disaster from a positional point of view. You've got a, a stunning like a plus five, 12, 15 plus for white in this position. So let me just go back briefly, guys. Do not take, if you're having blacks, don't take the pawn on e4 because you will be generating a uh, sequence of moves that might be leading very quickly to black getting in serious trouble. So Kasparov didn't take, but instead he took 
on d4, queen takes on d4. Obviously, naturally, a6 now, it's a, a very often played move because it challenges the bishop and asks the question, what do you do? You're going to go on c4, you're going to go a4, you're going to go e2, you're going to take the knights on d7, and in principle, black would be happy for white to take because also theoretically, they will be having the pair of bishops. And we know that in chess, it's the famous trying to preserve the pair of bishops. So, okay, so we even Chuck took the bishop, and bishop takes now on d7. Uh, bishop to g5, developing aggressively, okay, attacking that uh, knight h6. Bishop now takes, and Kasparov decided to take with g7. Now, amongst many reasons, uh, they probably, and very likely now, because it's, uh, you know, it's, it telegraphically tells you now that the Actually, the rook wants to play on g8, attacking the g2 pawn. So the idea would be now to play the bishop probably on e7 after the pawn has been moved to e6 probably, and then rook on uh, g8, attacking on g2. And probably this guy is going to come down. So that would be the black's ideas in this position. c4, c4 being played take more space in the in the center. Obviously, you don't want to play knight c3 first because you're going to kind of blocking this guy in. So you want to play knight behind the pawn. In principle, e6, exactly with the intention we've discussed, guys. The bishop wants to play probably on e7, which is going to happen. Uh, rook on c8. So Kasparov tries here to get all his friends in action. Rook on a8 didn't do a big deal of nothing, so he simply targets... Uh, the semi-open uh, file here and you know it's never bad to activate your pieces on the contrary it's the supreme recommendation get your pieces on the most active squares and i know it's easier said than done but we gotta strive to do this so rook c8 king now moves prophylactically on h1 guys either you would like to push this pawn up and you don't want to have any tactical issues because the rook being on the c and the bishop being on f8 you would like in principle to avoid in the future any bishop c5 attacking your king and pinning your queen so these kind of uh, details, the tactical details, you need to be aware. So probably Ivanchuk said, look, I'm going to move the king. And the second reason would be if black rook plays on g8, you no longer being targeted directly. And also you might be able to slide over nicely the rook from f to g to defend if necessary. So this is a subtlety. This is a tactical, strategical subtlety that need to we need to be aware of. <coughs> Apologies. Okay, so now I think it's obvious this guy wants to push the pawn, wants to push the pawn, and given a chance, will be targeting the g2, and that's exactly what they want to do. And you don't know, maybe the bishop is going to make it here, maybe yes, maybe not, maybe bishop e7, but definitely this pawn wants to come down. So Kasparov, you know, tries to make the most of the current situation, activating the pieces as they are, king not being castled by black mind you guys a4 a4's purpose to my understanding now is just to completely discourage any attempt black might have to playing b5 so you do a4 because now b5 can't happen you are attacking three times here and black supports it only twice if they were to push him forwards so by counting attackers and defenders a4 supreme this supremely discourages b5 being played so now kasparov insists with the h pawn because what else okay it's always good to disrupt and to um <clears throat> ruin your opponent's uh uh, fortress protecting the king so this one looks like very good but you can't allow that to happen and for this very reason Ivanchuk with white here plays h3 therefore stopping the pawn's advancement can't move that's that that must be done sometimes you got to play very wisely okay so bishop e7 now <clears throat> b4 complete dominance with the pawns on the queen side and in the center white is very very much taking a lot of space here uh a5 challenging the b4 and b5 now probably one of the many ideas might have been uh, probably in Casper of Mines to getting the uh, bishop maybe at some point here and placing it plopping on b4 could have been could have been an idea so 
queen to c7 with the obvious target of c4 so now the pawn is being attacked but very nicely elegantly white plays knight on f3 over to d2 defending on c4 queen goes on c5 Kasparov wants to trade queens. White queen is incredibly versatile, is very mobile and critically dangerous. So Kasparov would be super happy to have traded the white queen, which Vasily Ivanchuk denies. He doesn't want to. He wants to keep the queen on the board because it'll do a great job, as you guys will be uh, seeing. So rook exactly as we discussed guys rook from h move to g8 with one point of attack on g2 even should move the rook over from a1 to e1 again there's nothing to do with the rook on a file you want to get it on the file where the black king is because if those pawns are to be moving forwards and trading always a wise decision decision try to place your rook on the file where your opponent's king is in our case the e file the critical e file because the black king hasn't been castled guys so that's one one problem for black for kasparov to deal with so now he tries to move the queen over to the king's side threatening a queen g2 checkmate but as we've said previously when the king moved on h1 made space for the rook to play on g1 and defend g2 so that really pays off now that slight adjustment really does pay off at this point in the game so queen to f4 here and obviously targeting the f2 the other rook goes on f1 to protect he doesn't give any any inch any pawn to his opponents rightfully so and uh, knight goes on e2 attacking the black queen with tempo with the possibility perhaps this kind of things at some point queen goes away but Ivanchuk doesn't play knight on d4 he instead pushes c5 he instead pushes c5 the engines recommend here f4 but c5 has been chosen because very clearly Ivanchuk wanted to do something with this particular knight and the best thing would be here after c5 regardless if black takes with d or c to get the knight onto c4 because from c4 guys you are attacking b6 and you're also attacking d6 pawns so knight on c4 would be very very activated terribly terribly aggressive and a real problem for black here just as a subtlety if black were to take with b they would also need to be very aware that the pawn on b5 would like to come down the board so you also have that particular issue so d takes c5 would have been the best move here for black in the light of the omniscient engine but kasparov took with the rook which actually makes it a little worse for black as if it wasn't already so knight c4 indeed attacking b6 and d6 twice there is no way that both weaknesses can be defended simultaneously he tries to move the king away from the danger knight takes on b6 and look at this knight now look how aggressive the knight is so that was the whole idea of Ivanchuk to pushing c4 in order to allow the knight from d2 to jump on c4 then b6 or d6 and look at this threats it's getting really really problematic f4 he did play f4 now f5 from black takes of course opening up the lines and the fires white would be so happy rook over to c obviously if the rook makes it here that looks very good the bishop would be pinned quite problematic for black so for this reason Kasparov made the move which I'm pretty sure that's incredibly uncomfortable I'm sure that for the world champion at that point in time in 1991 to playing in this fashion was incredibly suffocating very uncomfortable and probably that's one of his uh, nightmares so g4 being played formidable move because the rook is on the same file with the black king so the ampersand actually will make things even worse because if the black pawn were to take queen were to take and 
you've got a check and there is simply the king can't move on h7 because queen would take on g8 with checkmate disaster so again ampersan after queen g3 you got to play crazy stuff like bishop g5 and that now that's looking completely completely disaster for black here so for this reason Kasparov didn't take Ampassan, but instead tried to stave off a little bit the white rook. But hey, rook has been, uh, rooks have been traded now. Knight plays again very aggressively, targeting the bishop on e7 with, uh, you know, you're just attacking a piece there. Uh, bishop moves on f8, and I'm just watching, you know, in total amazement and disbelief here. And look at the black pieces, how awkwardly they're being positioned at this stage in the game and even should just attacking and attacking relentlessly queen to d8 now attacking obviously the bishop on e8 everything's bad here for black i can't say what's worse here king's position uh pieces being uh, just on the back rank not being uh, at all activated i don't know what's worse here for 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 black Queen, I mean, it's a desperate attempt. Queen to g6, he attacks the queen. Now, queen to g6, because simply Kasparov wanted to try any possible checks, you know, with queen to e4, and maybe some checkings, maybe some attacking. He tried, but Ivanchuk denied everything and pushed the pawn. Obviously, you can't take here because uh, pawn is going to take and the rook uh, takes the black queen. So that's looking very grim very bleak indeed more attacking I, I mean it's absolutely suffocating when i you know when i've just revisited the game i've just realized how how suffocating how how smothered the whole things must be felt by black might have been felt by black again a last desperate attempt to try via this diagonal to do something to pose some problems but now very intelligently incredibly fantastic rook to g4 blocking the black queen totally in any possible attempt to do not anything uh, on that diagonal and even if the black pawn had played normally probably most of us in that you know heat of the battle we would have thought oh quickly rook to g2 actually not you got to play aggressively all the time and that's exactly what Vasily Ivanchuk did and does nowadays knight to f4 formidable player Vasily Ivanchuk knight to f4 black queen under attack where do they go where do they go? I mean, if you could just take it a couple of seconds, give it a couple of seconds, look at the pair of bishops, look at the rook, look at the queen. I mean, this is just incredible. I mean, probably this was a nightmare for Kasparov. Uh, you know, this is just absolute nightmare. Queen to f6, the last coffin in the nail, uh, the, uh, the last nail in the coffin. Well, could have been the other way. <laughs> okay, uh, king to h7 here. And after rook takes just resign because obviously there will be just a delay the bishop might be playing on h6 but to no avail really after rook takes h6 we do have a checkmate so guys that's the moscow variation or the canal uh variation of the sicilian okay uh this is a splendor of a game i hope you guys enjoyed it i'm gonna put the pgn I'm going to pinpoint the comment with the PGN and all the information for you guys if you want to revisit or if you want to copy paste into your own engines and have another look at this delight, uh, delightment of a game here. So fantastic game from Ivanchuk. Again, the canal variation, guys. Uh, have a good look at this one because that's a model for how white should be conducting the uh, bellicose versus black here if this were to happen. And that idea would knight f6 be no afraid castle because as soon as black takes on e4, disaster. After rook, after knight, uh, it, it's going to be very, very, very bad. Okay, so guys, I hope that's going to be useful now for your future approaches. Wonderful game, Ivan Chuk White, Gary Kasper of Black, 1991, Linares, Spain. I'll see you guys very soon. Enjoy your chess.